Hey guys, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel and blog. Today's project is going to be a faith-based um, canvas for Infinity Engravings as I'm on their design team. So we're going to use um, several different mediums and embellishments to create our canvas. And I'm starting out with a 9 by 12 plain white canvas. Um, you can buy them pre-stretched and pre-primed. I get mine at Hobby Lobby just because I can use their coupons on them. Um, and I'm starting with some Tim Holtz Melange uh, tissue wrap and some Prima Soft Matte Gel. And this is a really nice adhesive. Um, it goes on nice and thin, but you can also put it on a little thicker if you have heavier elements to adhere. So I just put it on um, in a thin layer, about a third, third at a time, and then um, I also wrap my paper all the way around to the back and then just trim off as necessary. So here I'm just kind of pinching the corners and um, trimming the paper where it needs to fold over itself so I don't have a lot of excess bulk. And here's one of the chipboard die cut um, elements that I got in my design team package from Infinity Engravings. These are nicely etched um, laser cut die cuts from chipboard. And when you're using any kind of liquid medium like a spray over it, you don't want to prime it with gesso because it won't accept it. Um, it'll just kind of sit on the top and pull up and it won't look even or pretty. Um, so I start out with some distressing spray and I add some um, fireworks spray, which are unfortunately discontinued and I didn't realize that when I used them. But um, I paint over this anyway because I didn't like how it turned out. So, But I wanted to show the process so you can get an idea of what you can do with these die cuts and how um, fluid mediums soak into the chipboard. I also use some, some uh, Liquid Metals Color Burst on here just for the shimmer. And I do like how this looks when it dries, but it wasn't um, as opaque and stand out as I wanted it to be. I wanted this to look more like a wave, and so I ended up painting over it. But you'll see that later. So here's our canvas. Um, all of the matte medium is dry and you want to make sure it's dry before you go and paint over it because um, if you if it's wet and then you put more wet medium on top it can make your paper tear um, and essentially ruin the project. Um, so anyway starting with some white gesso and some London Blue Dilutions acrylic paint. I'm adding my sky and I just blend those two together with um, a wider acrylic paint brush. And I wanted this to look like a nice summer sky with a few little wispy clouds in it. And then on the bottom, I use the same blue, but no white. And then I add in some turquoise. Um, to differentiate the water from the sky. And I live in Michigan. I grew up in northern Michigan. So if you've ever been to the lakes around this area, um, they have a beautiful turquoise color in the summertime. And I wanted to kind of do my best to represent that in the piece. And then I also take a baby wipe and wipe up some of the paint to help the background print in our tissue paper come through. I didn't want it to come through too strongly, I just wanted a little bit of it. And here's another chipboard die cut. This is going to be a lighthouse. And so for the background piece, I just did a coat of white gesso. And then for the front, I use London Blue Delusions Paint. And I wanted a darker blue, so I added some Distress Ink Blueprint Sketch Reinker to it. And it does thin down the paint quite a bit. 
but I liked the darker color. And they blend really nicely together because they're both, the, the acrylic paint is a water-based paint. So adding the um, ink into it didn't affect the opacity of it at all. And I also added some of that to the tail end of the wave die cut. And there I'm adding some white gesso to the top to make the top of the scroll look like the crest of a wave. But I also left some of the blue showing through to um, indicate that it's still water. So here I've got some of the London blue paint and then I mixed in a bit of the um, Blackberry Violet Heavy Body Dina Wakely paint to give it a darker hue. And I also added in a bit of the Lindy Stamp Gang Flat Magicals pigment powder in Tweedledee Denim. Because I wanted a darker, um, almost a navy blue. And I just painted the die cut with that. And then I add a second coat of white gesso to the background piece. And then um, where the light would be on a lighthouse, I added a coat of yellow acrylic paint. Um, and that's also the Dina Wakely Heavy Body in Lemon. So here's a piece of vellum that I put through my printer to um, print out the scripture verse. And then I added a sheet of stick it adhesive, sheet adhesive to the back of the vellum to make sure that I could adhere it completely down to the canvas and it won't lift. And so this faith word is another die cut from Infinity. And um, I use some white Prima white sand texture paste over it because I wanted to give it the look of stone. And so I add the texture paste carefully to it, uh, making sure that I kind of clean up the edges so that I don't lose the shape of the die cut itself. And I put it on fairly thickly, not super thick, but I wanted the texture to show through. I wanted it to look kind of bumpy and uneven and um, as, as stone-like as I could. Um, so I just go through my palette knife and um, clean up the edges, make sure I'm getting the texture paste appropriately applied. And when, if you use this paste by itself, it dries into a translucent sandy color, like dry sand you would find on the beach. Um, but I don't necessarily like it by itself. I usually add um, a color to it or I put something on top of it. But I do really like the texture that it gives. And this particular palette knife I'm using is from Viva Decor. 
and it has a smaller spade shaped tip to it so it's easier to get into the little nooks and crannies on your die cuts. And so while it's wet, I'm going to add some st Stampendous Frontage Aged Gold Embossing Powder. And this embossing powder it has varying sizes of granules, um, so it's going to add a lot of texture and color to it. It's really cool when, it, when you heat emboss it. Um, but you want to wait until your texture paste is completely dry. Otherwise, you'll get um, a rather ugly texture to it because it, the, the texture paste will cook underneath it. So here we have our lighthouse die cut and you can see where I painted the yellow um, acrylic paint to indicate where the light would be on a lighthouse. And then I just spread some Faber-Castell gla glitter glass bead gel over it to bring out the light to catch the light. And there I'm using some of the same Prima soft matte gel medium to adhere those two together. And set that aside to dry. And we're back to our scroll wave die cut. And um, I'm using some of the same glitter glass bead gel on different areas. I didn't want to completely cover it, um, just to kind of highlight the crest of the waves and the curls. And this stuff is pretty thickly textured with the beads, um, but it catches the light like nothing else. So here is another um, scroll die cut piece from Infinity Engravings. And I coated this with um, white gesso first. And now I'm spraying it with some Lindy Stamp Gang glitter spritz. And then let that dry. And here is our Faith die cut with the um, embossing powder. And you can see where it's melting, but it's a, the texture paste wasn't 100% dry. And so you're going to see some bubbling. Um, and with this one, I actually liked the texture with it because it added a more craggy, rock-like texture to it, which is what I wanted. Um, but this is the bubbling that I was talking about. It, if you want a smooth finish, you it won't look smooth. <laughs> um, you need to really wait until it's dry, and I didn't wait long enough. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that this is probably five or six hours because I'd, I'd made it in the morning, went to work, and came home, and I figured it was dry, but it wasn't quite dry enough but I still did like the craggy texture that it gave. So here's our um, white scroll die cut again, and I'm using some Distress Crazing Medium, which is a, a really thin crackle texture when it dries medium. And I'm adding a little bit of some Lindy Stamp Gang um, Glitz Shots, I think it's called. And I mix that up with the crazy medium and then paint that over my die cut. Just to give it some shimmer and a little bit more color. The thicker you apply this crazy medium, the bigger cracks you're going to have. Um, but with this die cut, because it's so thin and delicate, you don't really see a lot of the cracks immediately. So here it is after it's dry, and I add some um, Distress Spray Stain in Blueprint Sketch. And you're going to see it pill up, and, and this is what I was talking about with um, it not soaking in in a uniform manner when you have the acrylic over it. And it's gonna pool up. And so the second thing I use is Hydrangea Blue Lindy Stamp Gang Glitz Spritz. 
and this adds that gorgeous texture or the gorgeous shimmer rather and then I kind of dry it with my heat tool and I wanted this to look aged so um, I kind of liked the pooling of it And if you're using a heat tool on these, you want to keep it moving. You don't want to let it sit too long in one spot because you don't want to cook um, your mediums. You just want to dry it. So you want to keep it, a, you know, at least six inches away and keep it moving so that you're getting warm air on it so that it is drying, but it's not going to overheat it. And see there, I'm trying to show you the, the cracks and the crazing and the different levels of color. So to get my um, sentiment panel straight, I just um, temporarily taped a ruler down to the bottom edge so that I had it straight. And then I use that release paper over the top to kind of rub my bone folder over it and really stick it down. And then I did the same by flipping it over so I had a, a harder surface to rub against. And here I'm arranging my elements. And I just use the same soft matte gel on the back of my die cuts to adhere them down. And I do use this fairly thickly on the back. Um, just to make sure that they're good and adhered and um, this is a matte formula so it'll dry without a shine and you don't see it once it's dry if anything does squeeze out from underneath you won't see it so I put some heavy objects on that and let it dry let it sit and I do the same thing with the rest of the die cuts except for the lighthouse And now I've got some buttons and beads from 28 Lilac Lane. And I've just arranged them to kind of mimic the shape and coloration of a wave. And I started hearing those using the matte medium. And um, I adhered the lighthouse with some thick foam adhesive to allow it to sit over the tail end of the wave die cut. So I adhere the buttons first and then I go in and kind of fill up any spaces or gaps with the smaller beads that are in the um, button mixes. So you'll have some bugle beads, which are thin, long rods, and then seed beads. And those um, pliers I have, pliers, tweezers I have there are from Elizabeth Crafts. And I don't think I ever make a project without using them. They're kind of indispensable. So as you can see, these button mixes comes with um, different sizes and shapes and hues of the buttons. The white ones are from the candy cane, sorry, cotton candy mix. And the blue ones are from the winter blues mix. There is sequins in these mixes as well. There's the cotton candy and there's the winter blues. And I didn't use any sequins on this. Oh, and there's flat back pearls too that I used to fill in the spaces.
So yeah, the idea, the idea behind this canvas was um, to kind of demonstrate, if you will, my faith, um, how it's shaped my life, and how it's shaped how I think of myself and how I treat other people and, and um, kind of how I look at the world and how I consider things. And um, this verse specifically was really comforting for me. So I wanted to kind of um, demonstrate that. And the lake has always been something comforting for me as well. So they just kind of fit. So if you want to look at the blog post that goes with this video, I'm going to have um, a few more close-up shots of the canvas and um, so you can get, get an idea of what it looks like as a whole as well as the, the um, different parts and pieces to it. Thank you for joining me today and if you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and leave any questions or comments in the um, comment section below and hit up my blog post if you'd like to see more details. All of my social media contacts are at the end of the video and we will see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.